These shores have seen a history of invasion, from the Mongol hordes of Kublai Khan to the modern armies of France, Japan and the United States. One by one, the foreign forces have been resisted and repelled, but a new, more subtle force has arrived in Vietnam. The government and the party must now decide how to face this unarmed but potent foe, global capitalism. When the Americans were thrown out of Saigon, few saw it as an actual defeat. For America, it was more of a momentary setback in the march against communism. The Vietnamese had a different perspective. For the Vietnamese, there was no Vietnam War. They fought in the American War. They won, but with enormous losses. One million dead if you believe the Americans, three million if you believe the Vietnamese. The US has spent millions in its search for some 1,500 soldiers missing in action. The Vietnamese have little to spend on their own MIAs, estimated at some 300,000. This state-run hostel in Hanoi cares for mothers who lost all their sons to war. For these people, conflict has been the defining experience of their lives. All of them have suffered. Vietnamese tradition places great importance on the remains of family members. To not know where they are is a double tragedy. Ở nơi nào thì cũng thương quá mà tôi không biết là Cứ kêu khóc là mỗi khi thì còn đi học thì các bạn nằm hoa đi là Phật còn lại chín phương rời còn lại mười phương. Bác Thi Nung is one of the lucky ones. She now knows where her only son is buried. For 17 years, she didn't. Còn lại ông thần linh còn lại bà thần linh mà đến bây giờ cũng chưa thấy được tìm được hết. No one's forgotten this. There were immense sacrifices on both sides, and the Vietnamese uh, sacrificed uh, virtually everything except the country in the process of this uh, conflict. But it just seems Douglas so Peterson is the US ambassador. He too has suffered. The ambassador is one of those who experienced Hanoi as a prisoner of war for six and a half years. But he doesn't dwell on the past. It's the future that interests him. These conflicts have taken their toll, yet the Vietnamese, for the first time in 4,000 years of their history, can look beyond one generation and assume peace and prosperity. They see that. It's real. But the party is an anachronism. It's in many ways the past ruling the future. The party has changed. Uh, there is debate within the party about which direction this country should go. Uh, major debate. That debate is very much on generational lines. For older Vietnamese, the war and the past cannot be ignored. This great grandmother remembers the French bombs. For her son, it's American napalm. <coughs> Thanh niên ấy, là tập trung cho là chiến tranh cho đến lúc về hưu. Thanh ngon nhỉ mẹ nhỉ? But Thai's son and daughter-in-law have no memory of war. For their generation, priorities are changing. We have to earn the living ourselves. We cannot depend on anyone. During the day, Quinn's husband sells mobile phones. It's a private venture in a communist state, and for Tung that means problems. He believes the government is not moving fast enough toward economic reform. Là là cũng cũng làm cho nó dễ thở hơn. 
cũng làm cho cái hệ thống giấy tờ thì nó cũng đơn giản đi thì cũng cũng làm cho cái các cửa hàng các đơn vị kinh doanh cá thể như bọn em cũng dễ chịu hơn nhưng mà ngược lại thì nó chưa thực sự đến sát sườn bọn em. For many young Vietnamese it's the same story. There is immense nationalism and there is respect for the party. After all the party delivered them from the French and the Americans. But now they also want material well-being. They are a danger because Vietnam has a very low starting point. And if Vietnam have a growth rate of 7 or 8 percent, Vietnam could catch up. But if Vietnam grow only about 4 or 5 percent, the gap will be widening and it's a real danger. Economic advisor and party member Le Dang Zhuang acknowledges the difficulty. Uh, it's not a problem that the people don't understand it, but how to turn from understanding to action. It's a lot of step of skill, of competency, of capacity. While the party finds the threat of economic competition a challenge, it finds the concept of political competition utterly unacceptable. At Communist Party headquarters recently, 160 members debated the agenda for next year's 9th Congress, when the party will decide whether its monopoly on power can withstand the freedoms reform will bring. Since 1986, the party has had its own version of Russian perestroika. They call it doi moi, or renovation but the new openness it promised has been slow in coming. Every foreign journalist must be accompanied by a government fixer who promotes the party line. Yeah, the road is, was built uh, last year and some hotel now is in, uh, under construction. And this is all government money that's going into this? Uh, yes, the government projects. Uh, it's Mr Zung's job to tell us what we can or can't film. Is that military base over there? Any chance we could do some filming there? No, we can't. <laughs> no? No, we can't. Why not? Yeah. They have guns. Huh? They have guns. <laughs> Mr. Zung earns less than $4 a day, but for his services, we must pay the government $500 a day. This clash of communist ideology and market forces surfaces regularly. When the coal industry slumped last year, 50,000 workers from this mine northeast of Hanoi were laid off. But coal mines are traditionally where the leaders of the revolution came from. Fearing unrest, the government rehired the 50,000, subsidising the failing industry. This manager says the situation has now turned around. There was no unrest, he asserts. These workers, he claims, are not lacking in solidarity. Vietnam is still fundamentally an agricultural nation. 75% of its people live in non-urban regions. In the past, it was relatively easy for the party to control the population. Especially in rural areas, lack of information and lack of education meant little dissent. But in the last decade, there has been a massive migration from the country to the cities. Figures are notoriously inaccurate. Some claim the population of Hanoi has doubled in the last 10 years. Uh, of course, the gap of income in urban region and rural region is the driving force for this migration. No? And uh, obviously, the government could not control everything. 
One thing the government desperately does want to control is the flow of information. The tightly controlled Vietnamese press is little more than a government mouthpiece. Dissenting voices are actively discouraged, and we are not allowed to hear them. There are dissident writers, but gaining access to them under the constant watchful eye of our government minder is virtually impossible. While we are here, a French journalist is expelled from Saigon for contacting dissidents. In the Vietnamese press, there is no mention of why, merely a story of how a French tourist was expelled for having an incorrect visa. For the official line on literature, this professor and party member is normally paraded before the media. I think today in Vietnam, uh, writers, uh, they have uh, they, they the freedom uh, and the, the critic also has the freedom. But what freedom do they have if we can't speak to them? Today, all the Vietnamese writers they have freedom in, 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 uh, in, in their job. Uh, writers and also critics like me. But we can make contact only with the writers that the government wants us to. Uh, in the period of renovation, uh, that means uh, in uh, 1986 up to now, uh, I think uh, all writers, they have freedom. And also uh, all critics like me and all professor. Within this closed and secretive regime, there is ample opportunity for corruption. The government claims, as part of Doi Moi, the problem is being addressed. There have been public executions, and even the party's deputy prime minister was sacked earlier this year over corruption issues. But transparency in administration is new for Vietnam. We were in war. So during the war, who cares about the administration? And then, in, fourth, in the first place, there was no administration. So people would just do everything to win the war. So obviously, when peace comes, we'll have a lot of problems. No Bartan is a high-ranking lawyer. She confirms that the administration is corrupt. It is a well-known fact. And all our efforts are concentrating on that. The government in the first place. What is it doing? Well, it seems to me that, um, well, it seems to me that efforts are doing, and then we also pass a law on anti-corruption, much noise, but I think that there is not much not many results. It's the corruption and inflexibility of the party administration that has stopped Vietnam from bearing its teeth as an Asian tiger. When the US lifted trade sanctions in 1994, investment rushed in, and then it promptly rushed out. Last year, the Vietnamese government suddenly scuttled the signing of a planned bilateral trade agreement with the United States. The confidence and promise that was seen in the early 90s has evaporated. Well, I think the Vietnamese felt it was moving too quickly. Uh, they became alarmed after the Asian financial crisis uh, hit uh, the region, and uh, they were not necessarily uh, negatively impacted initially by that, but they saw the practices that were ongoing in some of the other countries that they were embarking on and uh, they decided to pull back to sort of test the waters to see what was going to happen. Here goes Steve. Better. Heavy, fella. That's it. Whether the back down was planned or unintentional is unsure. What is sure is that many investors have lost faith. Even the Saigon Saints, an expat Aussie rules team, is feeling the pinch of the investment exodus. The pool of um of players to choose from has has fallen uh, quite severely um, as uh, foreign investment has slowed there have been less people entering the country and and people have been leaving so 
our, our number to choose from is, is declined. There you go. Here you go. In the middle. Pally. Yeah, Pally. Sam. Yeah, Pally. New Yorker Devin Standard is the marketing director of Colgate Palmolive in Vietnam. Vietnam is a very complex and a, and a challenging place to work. So it's no easy money here. No he sees money. the difficulties for foreign business as bureaucratic bungling, legal confusion and corruption. Fortunately, we haven't run into uh, many challenges in that arena, but quite a few of my friends working in, in different firms have have had to be creative and delicate in dealing with it. So how do they do that? In creative and delicate fashions. The lure of foreign investment has been insufficient to change the party's ways. But one force purely by numbers may be sufficient to bring the party monolith crashing down to earth in the 21st century and that is the country's youth. More than half the population is under 25. I do not like politics because it is so... Sometimes for me, politics is cruel and it's unfair because it stands on the side of the strong ones. They, they protect their rights and things like that, but they do not protect us, the, the country that need more help. Increasingly, the messages they hear and the attitudes they emulate are taken from the West. Because before, when we closed our door, we didn't know what was outside our country, but now we know, so we know what is the goal for us to aim for. But not all outside influences are good. Rates of drug addiction, prostitution and HIV infection are all soaring. And as youth is more exposed to the West, some behaviour unusual in Vietnam is becoming more common. The young are now expressing their frustration in civil disturbances. It is not so much opposition to communism, but an attraction to consumerism and all that goes with it that is the driving force. If the party reform and could develop the economy, could provide the welfare for everybody, the people will support the party. For what? To get in instability? I don't think so. If the party doesn't reform, doesn't stop corruption, it creates a problem. If the party do it well and link with the people and improve the living condition, the people will support the party. But increasingly, support will depend on the party satisfying the burgeoning taste for material wealth. And in this stalled economy, real employment opportunities are few. The real dilemma facing Vietnamese communism is that which faced Mikhail Gorbachev. Refuse reform and be left behind, or open up and invite unstoppable demands for political change. <laughs> 